Hey everybody, Michael Laitler here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about ways to deal with difficult people. <laughs> There's no easy way to do it, but there are methods you can use to make your life a lot less difficult when you're dealing with these type of people. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right on to this video. Dealing with difficult people happens in every role in life. No matter if you're a leader, a parent, you're part of a church group, there is gonna be a difficult person you're gonna run into. Heck, if you're in Walmart, you're probably gonna run into someone difficult. You really don't know. There's always ways to work around these type of situations. They don't have to be gut-wrenching all the time. When I look at my different ways on handling difficult people, I usually stick with four methods that have been proven to me to work. Now, there are methods out there, but these are just ways that I have found that have really been beneficial to my style of leadership, as well as just dealing with day-to-day -day activities. The first method of dealing with difficult people is prepare for that conversation. Whatever's going on between you and this person, you know that you're gonna have to confront them. Nobody likes confrontation. That's probably one of the biggest issues people have is confrontation. However, there are things that you have to be able to work through as teams, as groups, as family members. And one of the best ways to do that is get yourself ready for this conversation. No matter what you do or say, <laughs> you're gonna have to have this conversation. So what I would recommend doing is take the time and work on yourself. Take some deep breaths. Get yourself in a mental state to where you're able to safely deal with this person because you don't really know what's going on in their mind because how many minds can we control at a time? That's just one and that's our mind. When we're going into these conversations, we have to look at all the different things that affects us as a person. What gets us upset as far as trigger words? If you hear someone call you stupid, or if you hear them say you have bad breath, whatever that might be, you first wanna look at what will turn that conversation bad on your end, because you never know what's gonna turn on their end. So that first part of that preparation is look at yourself, look at everything that is going on with you. Are you tired? Have you, ever, have you already had five other difficult conversations? But preparation in this manner will help guide you and help you move past whatever you have going on to allow you to have that difficult conversation. The second method for dealing with difficult people is understanding the purpose. Why are you having this conversation with this person? Is it just to understand what they have going on or do you have to work through an obstacle or overcome an issue? There are times when we do not need to talk to people. If they're difficult and they have no other factor in your life, then I would just say, why even deal with them? However, if this person's a family member or they're a coworker, you have to get through whatever's going on to allow you guys to continue to function together. When you're looking at your purpose, why do you want this relationship to work? Everything we do in life is based on relationships and part of keeping them strong, part of keeping them cultivated is to understand why we have them. But if we're just having these difficult conversations just to have them, it's never gonna be productive for you or that other person. After you prepare yourself mentally, check your purpose. And then that way it allows you to go on to the next method. Method number three, now you're actually in this conversation with this person. This is a time to not only tell your story, but understand their story. Empathy goes a far way when it comes to both sides of what's going on. I always like to listen more than I like to talk. There is a time to talk because obviously you wanna explain your side of the story, but you have to be able to listen. In Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he actually talks about the concept of empathetic listening. If that is a style that will work for you, I highly recommend it because it's one of those things that really show that you're paying attention to what the person has going on. It takes a feeling to actually listen to what the person is saying. And I, I, I'm pretty sure as you 
compare their story to yours and you kind of understand the bigger picture, you'll start to understand, kind of going back to method one, what issues they have going on in their life. What's their trigger words? What are things that may escalate this conversation to one that's not beneficial to either person? So when you're looking at how to overcome and go past this difficult conversation, make sure you get both sides of the story. Don't just assume that your side of the story is the only right one. You have to take an approach to where this person has a story, they have a life going on, thus you have to look at both areas to really build up. Ask questions. What was your purpose behind this? How did this happen? When did this happen? One question I would stay away from, especially extremely early on in that conversation is why. A lot of people take defense of the word why because just when you hear it, whenever I hear it, I feel like you're questioning me aggressively. That doesn't mean that you are, but when you're thinking about how to word it, rather than say, why did you do this? Why did you make this choice? What was the reason that you decided to say this to me? What was the purpose behind this statement? These little changes in the using why versus what will really help you know, manage that difficult conversation. So when you're looking at both sides of the story, ask, ask questions, ask a lot of questions. Don't just ask one question and say, okay, I got both sides of the story. No, go through a series of questions that you feel are necessary for that. But worst case scenario, always go through the five W's and the H. Who, what, where, when, and why, and how. Make sure you use why last, because you don't want that bringing up early, but if you really want to understand both sides of the story, go through those questions, and that'll allow you to develop that conversation a little bit better, and hopefully come to a more positive resolution. The fourth method for dealing with difficult people is go in there with the mind of problem solving. Don't go into the conversation just assuming that you're just having this conversation just to make the issue worse. Go there with the concept like of, I'm going in, in there, I wanna help fix whatever hap is going on to allow this impasse to happen. So when you have this mindset and this concept of problem solving, it's gonna go a far way because you want this to be a win-win. You don't wanna win this conversation and then lose it for the other person or you don't want them to win this conversation and you lose it. You wanna always take it to the approach of, you guys are both gaining something out of this conversation. And at the end of the day, you, you're building towards something that's more positive. So when you're looking at this method, just understand that the end game is for both people to succeed at whatever goals they have. You don't wanna make a difficult conversation with this person even worse because you decide to go in there of, well, I'm just coming here. I just want to win. I just want to make sure my points taken because when you do that, you will not win and neither will the other person. And then you just find yourself dealing with another difficult conversation with the same person because you did not go in there with the mindset of a problem solve to make this method effective. Once again, go back to what I said in method three, ask questions. What does the solution look like to you? What is a problem I can help with? How do we overcome this issue? What does a perfect scenario look like to you? These type of questions will show the person that you are trying to make it better overall. You're not just coming in there and bringing your one side to the story. You're not just trying to overcome whatever you have going on to force your way. No, we're gonna figure out how to solve both of these problems. Now, it doesn't always mean that this is always gonna work, but it's definitely gonna help overcome what's going on. I'm gonna add a little bit of bonus material to this video to substantiate some of the methods we just went through. And one of the things I look at in addition when dealing with difficult people is, is this conversation a difficult conversation with a difficult person? or is this going to be a learning conversation with a difficult person? And 
I believe when you have these school of thoughts and when you go from one to the other, it changes your whole mind frame of how you're going to deal with this person, how you're going to succeed and be able to take this conversation to the next level. A few of the things that I look at when comparing whether or not this conversation is going to be a difficult or learning and changing my mindset from difficult to learning are the following. A what happened type of question. For example, they meant for this to happen to me. That is a difficult conversation type of mindset because you're already putting the blame on that person. You're not looking at the other side versus I wonder what they meant by their actions. That little switch of verbiage asking more of a question versus just directly undermining the purpose of what they were trying to accomplish helps you open up a lot more just from the beginning. Another method to look at when you're comparing a difficult versus a learning conversation is based on feelings. If you're taking a difficult mindset into it, you may, something, you may say something to the effect of, my feelings are their fault. How were your feelings their fault? Now, did they play a factor? They could have. They could have said something or did something to you or purposely kept you from a certain task that you were trying to complete. But at the end of the day, who's responsible for their feelings? Me, you, the individual. And when you take that approach, when you're switching it from a difficult conversation to a learning conversation, you might say, my feelings are mine. I can acknowledge their feelings with empathy. Right there, you're taking ownership of what's going on with you. And you're also realizing that they may have feelings as well. I mean, they are human just like you. And we tend and we all have responded with a emotional statement or we respond it based on our feelings. If we can do it, they can do it. And that's why it's best to learn how to control your emotions and your feelings to understand the difference in conversations. And I think once you work past that leading up to this conversation, I think it'll really help out because feelings come and go. We know they're not permanent. And when we take out as much as we can, those feelings from that conversation, it helps us to remove some of the clouds of what they're doing to us or what we believe they're doing to us. Thus, when you're looking at that difficult versus learning conversation, remember, your feelings are yours. My feelings are mine. Their feelings are theirs. Thus, when you're comparing the two, you want to make sure that you fully understand both sides and you understand that you have to control and own what's going on with you. The third area to look at is identity. When you're coming from the identity type of question from a difficult standpoint, you may say something to the effect of, they are attacking my identity without justification. Well, we're gonna pause a little bit, not the video, but kind of your thinking on this concept. Because sometimes when people say things or they do things or they respond, it may have been something that we may have caused. Not saying that's the case at all, or sometimes, or all the time, but once again, as we talked about earlier, there's always two sides to the story. And sometimes when we believe someone is attacking our identity, they may just be pushing out something that they thought was right because of maybe something that we showed. When we look at it from a learning conversation, one might say, some things are true that they are saying. Ooh, I know that could be brutal to our ego and our pride, but sometimes when people say things about us, they can be right. I know we don't want to hear that, but part of building that conversation to a learning one, we have to be able to have that open mind in order to help realize that this difficult conversation may be contributed to some of the things I did as a person. Now, I'm not saying that 
that's exactly what happened or that's the reason behind their attitude or their difficulty towards you. But sometimes when people say a certain amount of things, it can be true. I know it's never easy talking about difficult conversations with people or having conversations with difficult people, however you want to word it. But it's something, once again, that we're going to deal with. Some on a daily basis, more than likely on a weekly basis, definitely on a monthly basis. But there are certain things you can always do to get yourself ready. Prepare, check your purpose, understand both sides of the story and go for problem solving. And in addition, as a little bit of a bonus, look at if it's going to be a difficult versus a learning conversation. Because as we dig deep into anything that we do, we can always learn from it. We can always learn from the experience. I know none of us actually ever want to go through that because confrontation is things that most people don't want. However, when you're looking at dealing with difficult people, remember there's both sides that are hopefully working towards the same goal. And when you come in with that kind of mindset, it really helps take that situation to the next level. And sometimes it makes you guys even closer as far as the relationship goes because you were able to overcome that. You didn't just allow a difficult conversation or an interaction with a difficult person end it there. That bond becomes stronger, thus whatever you guys have working towards, the results become better. Hey guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my video on dealing with difficult people. I appreciate you always. Once again, I know I say it every video, but make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I definitely look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.